Okay, so let's do qu question two, and that's within the, the uh, Management Science uh, 352 Project Management Exercises uh, question sheet. And uh, we're building a house, we're building a large new home, and there's five activities. Uh, we won't worry about what they're exactly there. They specifically are, but let's say we have five activities with uh, relationships, uh, a normal time, a crash time, normal cost, crash cost, all the elements that, that uh, are necessary to... Uh, draw out this project and see how much it costs and, and ways that we could possibly reduce the time of the project and uh, even uh, reduce the cost of the project. So the costs for each activity here, we, we see them listed in the table, uh, reflect direct costs. So direct material costs, direct equipment costs, direct labor costs, uh, direct to each or kind of connected specifically to an activity. There are also about $5,000 a week in indirect costs so that for every week that we reduce the project duration by, we save $5,000. So, okay. So, by reducing the project duration by one week, we save $5,000. Now, there's a cost to crashing that particular project by that one, one week and we'll now compare to see whether it's worth our while to... Uh, to reduce the duration of, of this project. Okay. So that's what we'll, uh, we'll start off. We'll start off kind of, we have to do all the preparatory work and usually that preparatory work is, uh, we'll, we'll draw out the, uh, the diagram. It kind of gives us a sense for how things are connected. Uh, we'll need to figure out what paths go from the start to the beginning and, and what the durations of each one of those paths are because we need to determine the critical path and we need to determine the length of the critical path because it's activities on the critical path that we will be focusing on when we do our project crashing. And then after that, um, we'll get into the nuts and bolts and the dollars and cents and the accounting of uh, the specific project uh, crashing process in this particular context. First step here is we're going to draw out the, uh, the network diagram. Okay. So we have a start like we always do. Everything has a start. And what do we start with? Well, we see activity A has no immediate predecessors, but it is the only activity that has no immediate predecessors. So that makes A a beginning activity. So I go from start to A. A is the only beginning activity. However, uh, B and C both have A as uh, immediate predecessors. So A goes straight to B, and A also goes straight to C. B ha. D, so our D is in delta, has only one immediate predecessor, and that would be activity B, as in Bravo. So D depends only on B. Uh, activity E, however, if I draw it out an activity E, that activity is dependent on both B and activity C. Those are the only five activities, so now we just kind of go to finish. D and E are end nodes, and so they directly link to finish. Okay. I'm going to write real quickly the normal time in there. For A is 3, for B is 4, for C is 5, for D is 3, and for E is 4. Just reading it out of the normal time in weeks off the table. Okay, so now I have set out my activity or network diagram. So let's kind of look and do earliest start for the uh, various activities. So I have five activity, A, B, C, D, and E. And let's find the earliest start time, earliest finish time, latest start, latest finish, activity slack, and that demon slack, free slack. Hard one to do. So A is the only uh, beginning activity. So it, it starts at uh, period zero. It takes three weeks, so it finishes at week three. B and C both depend on A. So B and C start when A is completed, which happens at week three. B takes four weeks, finishes her up at uh, weeks seven. Uh, C takes five weeks, and so three plus five is eight, and finishes up at week eight. Activity D is in delta, depends only on B, and can begin when B is completed. And B is completed on week 7, 
D takes three weeks, and it is finished on week 10. E uh, depends on two activities, uh, both Bravo, B in Bravo, uh, C is in Charlie, and so it can only begin when both of those are completed. B is finished in week 7, C is finished in week 8, the later of the two is week 8, so it's at week 8, upon which both of those are completed, and then plus 4 for the duration of E gives us a completion time uh, for the project and for uh, activity E of 12 weeks. So this whole project will take 12 weeks. And we suspect that because E is the last activity, it takes the latest, that it is on the critical path. Okay, Not D, because D is finished two weeks early, can't be on the critical path that way. So latest start, latest finish. Well, we now know that we've locked in how long this project is going to take. So latest finish is 12 weeks. Okay, uh, E takes four weeks, so 12 minus 4 is 8. And we do know that E is on the critical path. Uh, D has to finish by week 12 as well. It takes three weeks, so minus 3 gives us 9. Okay, so now we kind of know E is on the critical path. D is not. Let's look at C. Ooh, E depends on B and C, and C has to be done by week 8, which means E can't f C can't finish anywhere later than week 8. Otherwise, it delays E, and if it delays E, it delays the entire project. Everything's all related, right? B, however, B also is an immediate predecessor to E, but it actually doesn't have to finish till week 8 as well. Uh, but so it, Because it takes uh, four weeks, uh, 8 minus 4 is 4, and so B has a little bit of a later start than C. And telling us now that we know that C is on the critical path, we know E is on the critical path, we know Bravo and Delta are not, A is on everybody's path, so A must be on the critical path as well. And we can confirm that by looking at C, which must cannot begin any later than week 3. C depends on week A to be finished, which means that A cannot finish any later than week 3. And of course, minus 3 minus 3 is 0, and A starts in period 0. You get any negative numbers through this whole process, probably a simple math mistake somewhere uh, lurking within. It's really easy to get a, a, a negative result in the, uh, the latest start, latest finish. If uh, there's any mistakes in... Um, in that working out that problem. Okay, activity slack. Well, we now know that the critical path is A, C, E, and we've seen that. So we know that activity slack and free slack on those three activities is going to be zero. Okay, so that makes our life a little easier. So now we just have to focus in on B. And I look and see latest start is four, earliest start is three, four minus three is one. I can also look at latest finish for, let's say, D uh, minus late earliest finish is 2, and see that activity slack for D as in delta is 2 weeks. Okay. So D can be delayed up to 2 weeks before uh, any delays to the overall project. B can be delayed up to 1 week without delaying the entire project. Uh, however, ACE, which are on the critical path, any delays on any of those three activities messes up the whole project, delays it. Ugh. You know, every week of delay, another $5,000 in indirect costs. How much do those project managers make anyway? Alrighty. Now, free slack. Now, because B and D are, have activity slack and are not on the critical path, they may have free slack. They may not have free slack. Free slack in a little tighter condition. And we recall that free slack is the, the time that an activity can be delayed before just the next activity is delayed. So let's look at B first. So B leads to D and to E. And D and E, uh, D starts on... So we start look at the... First step is to look at the early start of the next activity. And I look at D and I look at E, and the early starts of those activities are 7 and 8, respectively. So we zero in on the smaller of the numbers, which means uh, B has to be finished by week 7, otherwise D will be delayed. What's the earliest finished for, 
for for B. When is B normally going to be finished? Well, week seven. So that's telling us that any delays in B was going to delay D. And so no free slack there. Okay. We kind of also can kind of, you know, cheat a little bit or use it. Uh, cheat's too strong a word. Use a shortcut, an efficiency tool. D is not on the critical path. So with D not being on the critical path, um, kind of can suspect that uh, it's free slack and activity slack will not be the same. Sorry, with, uh, well, yeah, with because B just goes straight to D. Okay, okay now D, however, D's uh, last activity, or earliest start of the next activity, is the finish. Okay, well, the finish is, <laughs> I guess, by definition on the, on the critical path. So kind of suspecting activity slack and free slack will be the same, but let's double check. So we look at the earliest uh, start of the next activity, which is the finish of the finish of the project, which is week twelve, and we go minus the early finish of the current activity, which is D. So twelve minus ten, uh, and we get two. Okay, so we've confirmed that we're we're somewhat happy with that. Okie dokie. Okay, so that that knocks out uh, some of our issues here. So, uh, so we found the earliest, uh, earliest times, latest times, slack for each activity, and so on. We know what the, the critical path in, but let's look at the other pathways too. So we know that ACE uh, takes 12 weeks. What are the other paths? Well, it's going to be an A, B, E. Right? A, B, E. It's going to be uh, uh, A, B, D as in delta, A, B, D. Now, A, B, E, 3 plus 4 plus 4, that's 11. A, bravo delta, 3 plus 4 plus 3. Did I get that? A, B, D, A plus uh, 3 plus 4 plus 3, that's 10. Okay, so we, 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 we knew and now we've confirmed that ACE is, is indeed the critical path. Okay, so we're going to zero in on activities along this critical path to begin. So we want to pick the cheapest of those. Okay, so we might have, we have to do a little bit of calculation in this particular problem. So we're going to look at our A, look at our B, look at our C, look at our D, and look at our E. And we're going to find the CC or crash cost per week and the maximum crash time. So we have to determine that old school. Okay. And so we'd scroll back up to the uh, normal cost and crash cost and look at the tables. And we see that uh, crash cost is 660000 minus the normal cost of 54000 which is 6000 divide by 3 minus 2. And that gets a crash cost of $6,000 per week. We can go from taking three weeks to taking two weeks, which means we can crash A, a total of one time or one week. B, on the other hand, uh, is cost, crash cost of $65,000 minus the normal cost of $62,000. That's $3,000. Divided by 4 minus 3. So 3000 divided by 1 is 3000 and we can see that we can go from four weeks to three weeks, so we can crash B one week. Okay, just following the formula from the slides. If if you're you're wondering what I'm blabbing about right now. Uh, for C, a little bit more interesting. We have seventy thousand uh, crash cost. Uh, normal cost is sixty six thousand, so it's a differential of four thousand uh, dollars. We can crash in a total of three weeks. Five minus two. Crash it for three weeks, and then we take that uh, four thousand divided by three, and we get thirteen hundred and thirty-three dollars. D forty-three thousand in the crash cost minus a forty thousand normal cost divided by three minus two, because you can crash it a total of two weeks. So three thousand divided by two, and D costs fifteen hundred dollars per week to crash. Last one is E. E can be crashed for a total of two weeks from week four, from four weeks to two weeks. So we crashed a total of two weeks. 
and it costs us to crash those two weeks would cost us eighty thousand minus seventy five thousand or a total of five thousand dollars to crash for two weeks how much to crash for one week five thousand divided by two and we get twenty five hundred so we've we've set out our whole and entire table here okay and so we've got that we've got a critical path now we're set to go so let's see what we can crash so let's go to the don't have the nice fancy table to drop so we're gonna have to sketch one on our own so we're gonna look at a c and e and see because there are the three activities on the critical path and see which one is the cheapest to crash and i go a hey, six thousand woo hey you know what that's more than the five thousand dollars i'm gonna save there's no world where i crash um a a doesn't get crashed it just no way uh so now we go to the next one. C, ooh, 1,333, that's pretty good. Uh, e, okay, 2,500, okay, yeah. great, but not, uh, not, not good. Not good enough, I should say. So what we're going to do is we're going to crash C one week, right? And that's going to cost us $1,333. Now when I do that, that reduces how long the project takes, right? Scratch that out, go to 11, this stays at 11, that stays at 10. Okay. Well, that's interesting now. Now I have two critical paths. So I have to think about, I got to think combinations or an activity that's common to both. Oh. Since we're drawing up a minimum cost schedule, let's think of an activity that's common to both. E is common to both. So E costs us $2,500 to crash. Now we know that we're going to save $5,000 by crashing uh, for one week. So this is good. This is under 5,000. So step one, step two, sorry. Uh, crash E one week. Now you'll notice that we're doing this one period by one period. And that's because, uh, yeah, great. Crash C by two weeks, but then it's not the critical path anymore and something else is the critical path and that crashing C wouldn't have done us any good here. Okay. So we're going to crash E one week. That's going to cost us $2,500. Okay, what's going to be the impact of that? Well, it's going to take our critical path, that one down to 10, that one down to 10, and this one stays to 10. Holy cow! Oh, just when you thought it was getting boring, all three are critical paths. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, you don't have one. You don't have two. You have three. You have three critical paths. And so now you got to crash them all at the same time. Ooh, but Alan, you say, there's no common activity to all three. It can't be done. Ah, what do I do? What do I do? Ooh. Ooh, now we do the combo, activity combos. So now we're going to have to crash two activities, and we're going to have to pay to crash both of those activities. That kind of sucks. So now we're going to look at activities um, so we can see B and E as a possibility. Okay, let's, just, let's just write them down. In You'd write them down in a margin or a side so it's not so messy, but I could do a B and an E, let's say, as in break and enter. I can do a, uh, a B and a C. What else can I do? I can do uh, a D and an E. All right, that one's kind of fun. Um, B and E. D and E. C and E. Yeah, that's about all the combinations we can do. We got one, two, three. Yeah. Okay, so those are our choices. So let's look at uh, let them one at a time. Let's look at B and E. Okay, so how much would it cost to do B and E? Well, B and E is three thousand plus twenty five hundred. That's fifty five hundred bucks. I'm not spending fifty five hundred dollars to save uh, five thousand dollars. So B and E, that's dead to us. That doesn't work so well. So let's go to the next one. Let's go to B and C. So B is 3,000, C is 1,333. So, oh, that's good. That's $4,333, that's less than 5,000. I like that. So let's go with B and C, one week. That's gonna cost me $4,333, okay? Because although I'm crashing one week, I gotta pay for both activities. But that works. Now, what does that do? Well, that takes my, uh, uh, B and, and uh, C, so it goes down to 9. 
B and that's the B. So that goes down to nine. And this one has a B. That goes down to nine. Oh, but I still have three critical paths. Can I do more? Ooh, let's check it out. Okay, four. Now, can I do B and C again? Ooh, no, B, I can only do B once and B is done, right? So B is B is done. I'm finished. I'm, I've capped out on B. Uh, e is still a possibility. D is a possibility. Um, C and B. No, can't do C and B. C is getting to be like there's nobody else because I, I, I can't across my top critical path. I can't cross. I can't. Uh, A can't do because it's too expensive. C and B. We've already done, but then I can't crash B because I've maxed out B. So I'm stuck with E, D and somebody else. Okay. So, but E is in... Uh, so I can do E or D, or and, and somebody else, or uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of stuck, right? I need I need to crash all three, and I have to D and E are really my choices left. I mean, I could do C and 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 E and D, but that makes no sense, right? So I am somewhat restricted to crashing uh, D and D and E. It's just the only one that that really fits. And notice how that I mean I verbalized it, and and sometimes as you get better at it. It becomes obvious. It's not so much blah blah talk talk think think, uh, but you know you sort of want to get used to how how it's uh, it's derived. So we look at D and E, and I got D and I got E, and that's about four grand. Okay. Now I have done E twice, so E is now done. Oh, let's just sketch that out. Uh, that's down to eight. That's down to eight, and that's down to eight. Okay. Um, so uh, I, e is uh, E is finished. D I could do another. I could do another week of D. I could do another two weeks of C, but I can't. In a combination of C and D, I can't crash all three paths because this A, B, and E uh, is is pretty much maxed out. A, B, and E cannot be efficiently crashed anymore a can't we can crash it but it would cost we we spend six thousand to get five thousand b and e are done they're they're capped out so that one pathway can't can't be reduced any further at least not without losing money and so now we're pretty much we're pretty much stopped so our our next step is we can tally up how much money uh, we spent and so we kind of do the math here you know being out the calculator putting on the uh, the accounting hat and we say okay we're gonna spend about twelve thousand one hundred sixty six bucks a little over twelve thousand dollars okay so that's our cost now how much did we save well we crashed four weeks saved five thousand dollars a week so savings was twenty thousand dollars right our net Improvement, $7,834, right? So crashing four weeks, we spend uh, $12,166 to do that. We save ourselves 20 grand, leaving us $7,834 better off. And we got to really crash a whole lot of projects. And that is essentially all our project management all kind of collectively right in one question. Awesome, isn't it?